Okay. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see you all. I'm Marston from HBD. Welcome to HBD webinar, how to use metal additive manufacturing in dye and mold industry. Today, our overseas host is Mr. Tom. Welcome, Mr. Tom. Hi, everyone. Um, hi, Marston. Thanks for the, for the quick introduction. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to attend this webinar. Uh, my name is Tom Pace. I'm the UK National Manager of iMaker, a very proud partner of HBD. Uh, today, HBD joins hands with customers and partners to show how to transfer from traditional manufacturing techniques to digital production with additive manufacturing technology. In this webinar, you'll learn how metal additive manufacturing technology can be used in the mold and dye industry, the advantage brought by HBD metal 3D printers, as well as software and material offered by our partners. We hope this webinar will help you upgrade your business model and increase your customer base. Yes, during our webinar, all attendees could text your questions through the message box and we will answer your questions online on QA part. To begin with, let's take a look on our guest today. We have guests from Voxel Dance Company and uh, Siemens and our HBD Wilson and uh, Plasi and uh, also we have Mr. Liu from VMP. First, let's welcome Mr. O from Voxel Dance Company. He once worked for Cisco and Apple with extensive experience in product management and marketing. In his presentation, he will demonstrate two application cases of Voxel Dance additive with functions such as data importing, lattice, structure, and support generation, which is essential for tooling design preparation. Now let's welcome Mr. O. Hey guys, my name is Yingwei O, oh, the Sales and BD Director from Voxel Dance. Uh, some of you guys may have heard of us before. Uh, we are a software company dedicated to the AM and 3D printing industry. We have collaborated with HBD for years and I'm glad to have today's opportunity to do this presentation for you. Uh, since we have only like 10 to 15 minutes, I'll divide it into two parts. In the first session, I'll quickly walk you through this deck of slides to give you an overview of the product and solution, and then do a demonstration in the second half uh, to show you what we can do uh, in the software. Now, let's begin. If you look at the workflow of the end-to-end -end solution of 3D printed modes, it can be mainly divided into four steps. So from design to data preparation to the actual printing and post-processing. HBD um, is obviously good at the last two steps. While Voxel Dance as a software company, we uh, are focusing on the data preparation part. Uh, our top-notch product, Voxel Dance Additive, is arguably one of the only few um, options on this market. And I'll show you more details in the, in the next few slides. So the voxelness additive, I will also do the demo in, um, in the next few minutes. Um, this is the flagship product of Voxeldense. It uh, covers all the mainstream printing technologies, including LCD, DLP, SLA, SLS, and SLM. Uh, also, um, a full range of verticals, including aerospace, dental, medical, uh, and yes, also the mode and dye um, as today's topic and the rapid prototyping, etc. If you check uh, feature by feature and function by function of the software, uh, it covers um, a full workflow in terms of data preparation, or someone may call it CAM or slicing. Um, so it starts from um, the file importing uh, all the way down to fixing, orientation, support generation, until you are satisfied with the data and then slice it um, for printing. For those OEM machine vendors, we also have options for laser hatching. Um, we um, basically draw laser lines slice by slice uh, for your printer. Um, so these are um, the functions we have on the voxel dense additive. Now among all these features, there are a few key features um, that's especially useful for the 3D printed modes. For example, um, 
you can import the CAD file uh, directly into the voxel lens additive and convert it into STL. So this is a built-in function. We, um, you also have options to uh, a few granular settings. You can set the accuracy of the file. You can choose to fix or not to fix upon importing the file. You can also uh, do the remesh of the STL file to make it smooth. Also, we have a big functionality called lattice. So we provide a list of preset lattice structure for you to choose from, uh, including like BCC, FCC, also the honeycomb. And also you can import your own customized lattice structure uh, to, uh, to do the lightweight to the part. And here are the two examples. Uh, usually it's a two-step functionality. You do the hollowing first and then add structures uh, to the inside of the part. Um, this is one of the biggest um, functionality of any CAM or data preparation software. So we provide a full range of support types uh, uh, and uh, some granular settings to the support types uh, for you to apply to the part. So you can see a volume support, for example, with a diamond perforation or with a water drop perforation. We also um, support bar support. Uh, you can do this automatically or add it manually. Uh, the bar support can also be edited with diamond perforation. Um, and smart support is our own proprietary support type. Um, you can add cross connections to, uh, to the bars. And also the point support, the solid support, and volume support. Uh, with some uh, with some final touch on the sidewall, um, you can combine different types of supports. Uh, like on the right hand side, you can see the volume support with the smart support. Now let's move on to the next session, uh, the demo session. So in this session, I'll demonstrate the data preparation workflow with our voxel dense additive software. So. That's the end of the first part. Let's move on to the next part. So next, I'll demonstrate the data preparation on two different models with voxel dense additive. The first model is an insert for a tie mode. So you want to avoid the way it's placed now because the direction of the recorder is vertical to the flat wall. So this may lead to print fails or poor quality. I'll rotate the part by 90 degrees, or someone may prefer 45 degrees in this case. Then I'm going to move it upwards by 30 millimeters, so you guys can see how the support structure is generated later on. Then enter the support module. So the voxel dense additive allows you to create support scripts. This is smart support. And this is bar support or block support. And you may notice the perforation is water drop shaped. And I'll show you a script with multiple support types as well. In cases of metal printing, we would suggest a combination of solid and non-solid supports. So in the dialog box, you can find small support and bar support both in there. Since I've set four branches here, the bar support will be shaped like a tree support. So let's check closely the generated support structure. Obviously, there are a bunch of smart supports here. But if I hide them all, you will find an array of tree support hidden inside. Some folks may want the bottom of such model to be strengthened as much as they can. In this case, you can surely use solid support instead. So for this solid support, it has a fillet on the bottom, or someone may call it chamfer. The heat conductivity and stableness of solid support is arguably the best among these support types. Now I'm going to move on to the next demo with a slightly larger file. So this file is a mode. Please keep in mind that voxel dense additive can convert the CAD files to STL 
such as like UG, Pro E, etc. Import the file and then move it to the center of the platform. Obviously, the orientation or the normal of this file is wrong by default. You can either choose to auto fix it or mark the inner surface and then flip. You can hide the platform as well. Now I'm going to manually fix this model in two steps. First, I'll create bridge at the bottom. This will be a good reference for the software to fix. Then use auto fix. And you can find the bottom is closed now. Now let me show the platform again at the background. So for this model, the designer had told us the bottom is supposed to be thicker than it is now. And the bottom should also be flat. So let me first check the height. The lowest surface of this model is at 30 millimeter height. Let me mark the bottom surface and use the extrude function to extend the bottom by like 15 millimeters. Now, if you turn on the section view, you can see what's it like inside. Here, I want to improve this model with some touches of lightweight design. Again, I'll do it in two steps. First, let me hollow the model and then apply a certain structure type with certain value to it. Here, I'm setting it to 15 millimeters. Wait for it. Done. You can see the structure now. Even if you are not an expert in this area, if you compare it to its original design, the hollowing and lattice can definitely save material and time. It also reduces like the thermal shrinkage stress by eliminating those chunks of solid areas. Next, I'll do a horizontal section cut. and delete the trimmed off part. The height of this model is exactly 30 millimeters now. So let's slightly rotate this model, say by five degrees, and bring the height back to five millimeters. Now imagine the slices will have a linear changes of model details, slice by slice, instead of a sudden jump from nothing to everything. And here's a final touch by adding a support on the bottom. That brings us to the last step, the slicing. The sliced files are separated as support and part. So let me first hide the slices of the support and only analyzes the slices of the part itself. As you scroll up to check slice by slice from bottom up, the slices will begin with not all, but only a small area of the model. And then it grows gradually. If you analyze the distribution of slices, the graph will tell you it's smooth and it slowly increases and decreases. That's something we want to achieve. All right, guys, so these are the two quick demos from Voxel Dance for today. I hope this is informative for you and thank you. Thanks for sharing, Mr. O, that's very impressive. Now let's welcome Mr. Ashley Eckhoff from Siemens. Ashley worked for Siemens for over 20 years and is currently a member of the Additive Manufacturing Program team for Siemens Digital Industry Software. There, he works to develop and promote the Siemens AM software solutions. In this demonstration, Ashley will show the end-to-end -end process for how an injection mold with conformal cooling channels can be easily created using the Siemens AM software solution, how the performance of the mold can be simulated, and how the final product can be set up for printing and production. Now, let's welcome Mr. Ashley. Hello, 
My name is Ashley Eckhoff, and I work for the Additive Manufacturing Program at Siemens Digital Industries Software. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how our software can be used to design molds with conformal cooling channels. And along the way, we'll also talk about how our software interfaces with HBD hardware. Before we talk about designing printed molds, we should talk briefly about the molding process. Here we see a chart showing roughly the stages of the molding process, including injection, packing, discharge, cooling, and resetting of the mold. What you will notice is that the time one cycle of the mold takes is dominated by the cooling time. This is where conformal cooling channels normally come into play. So as we work with our customers in the field, we are increasingly coming across companies who are turning to additive manufacturing for the production of molds. And one such company is Toolcraft. Toolcraft is a manufacturing service provider in Germany who uses metal laser melting, robotics, injection molding, mold making, and more to produce a wide range of parts for their own customers in the medical, aerospace, automotive, consumer products, and semiconductor industries. As Toolcraft's additive business has expanded, and as they, as they have transitioned from prototyping to production parts, uh, the profitability of the technology has hinged more and more on the efficiency of the process. Now, back in 2018, Toolcraft won a contract to produce a lighter and more energy efficient mold tool for a customer. And they also needed to produce that tool faster than was realistically possible using conventional manufacturing. Now, Toolcraft was an early adopter of additive manufacturing, and they decided to use this new technology in order to meet the goals of this project. Toolcraft had already begun using our NX additive manufacturing software for design optimization, build preparation, and print management. But here they took this one step further. At the time, NX did not have built-in functions for conformal cooling design, so Toolcraft used SimCenter to optimize and analyze a manual conformal cooling design. The results were a 30% faster cycle time by massively reducing the amount of time necessary to cool the mold. If you remember the chart I showed earlier, the cool down time takes the majority of the time in a mold cycle. This means that it is ripe for finding new areas of efficiency. Now, Toolcraft was also able to cut some of the mass of the mold almost in half, which significantly reduced the energy consumption of the mold process by utilizing other advantages of additive manufacturing like light plating. And by leveraging a single software environment for their additive manufacturing operation, Toolcraft was able to squeeze the inefficiencies out of the process. They convinced their customer that printed mold tools could meet their stringent quality demands, and they made additive manufacturing one of the high growth parts of their business. So let's go look now at how a mold with conformal cooling channels might be designed and printed using the latest version of Siemens NX. So I'm not going to take us through the entire mold design process because it is very involved, but it is worth stating that we have a product inside of our NX CAD CAM CAE solution called Mold Wizard, which allows you to easily design all of the working parts of an injection mold system. If we drill down a bit here and have a look at the actual mold surface, we can see how easy it is to make changes to the final mold design using the strong CAD tools that are built into the NX product. Having a full suite of design tools integrated into the same system as the Mold Wizard mold design tool means that you can quickly and easily make any necessary design changes and those will be reflected in downstream processes like the final manufacturing of the mold. Now let's look quickly at the conformal cooling design within Mold Wizard. Here we are taking a 2D sketch of the cooling path and we are basically forming that onto a surface that is offset a set distance from the mold surface. This gives us consistent cooling throughout the coolant path, and the path can be any shape we desire because the final mold cavity will be 3D printed. Again, using our strong design tools, we can then mirror the conformal path to cover the other half of this symmetrical mold surface. 
Now that our mold with the associated conformal cooling channels has been designed, we can then use another set of integrated tools to simulate the cooling efficiency. This simulation takes into account the materials used for both the mold and the coolant type. We begin by setting up initial parameters, including the path of the coolant derived from the conformal cooling channels, the initial temperatures of both the mold and the coolant, and the flow rate of the coolant through those cooling channels. The system then simulates the thermal transfer and returns to us a heat map, giving us an indication as to the expected efficiency of the coolant system. Finally, once the mold design has been simulated and finalized, we turn to production. Here again, the appropriate tools are integrated into NX. First, we select the appropriate printer from a list of printers available to us, and this will define certain printer parameters, including the size of the build tray. We can then place the part in the build volume, and we can assign any necessary support structures. These can be used to separate the part from the build tray, but can also be used to manage the thermal stress caused by the printing process. NX includes a library of built-in support types, but also the ability to use the full set of integrated CAD tools to design and automate the creation of custom support structure types. The additive build is completed by printing directly to a wide range of hardware via various printer interfaces. This often means that there is no need to generate intermediate data formats like STLs, but rather that the print geometry can be handed directly to the printer for the most efficient processing possible. Finally, many if not most printed parts require some form of post-print processing. Here, the integrated CAM solution in NX comes into play, where the printed part can be machined to obtain the exacting tolerances required by an injection mold process. CAM and NX allows you to program and simulate the necessary machining steps as well as interface with quality control systems like coordinate measuring machines or 3D scanning tools. As you can see here, the NX solution set has everything you need to efficiently design, print, and process injection mold tools with internal conformal cooling channels. From the initial design to the final printed part, the process is integrated and efficient. So now that we've seen the basics of the workflow for design, simulation, and printing of molds with conformal cooling in NX, I'd like to talk briefly about our partnership with HPD. You may have noticed during the demonstration video that we do interface directly with HPD hardware. Once your printer build processor is installed, you can select the HPD printers you have installed from the dropdown and then set the printer build options all from within NX. The printer code is generated and can be sent directly to the HPD printer so that you never have to use any external files or file conversions. This not only streamlines the print process, but it also means there's less chance for error. You always know you're printing the correct version of a part with the correct setup because it's been sent straight from the integrated build setup tools in NX directly to the printer. It's only with strong partnerships with companies like HBD that this type of direct integration is possible. Now we've talked about a lot of steps in the printed mold design and manufacturing workflow, but there are other steps in the overall workflow that I didn't touch on today. Things like managing orders that come into your print shop, scheduling the execution of those orders, and monitoring your factory. Now Siemens also has software products for managing those steps of the end-to-end -end additive manufacturing workflow. Now your particular needs may not require the breadth of the Siemens solution, but the beauty of having a system like Siemens provides uh, is the ability to choose those parts of the system that you need today with the understanding that you can grow into using the entire end-to-end -end workflow as your additive manufacturing operation grows. If you have any questions about those other steps of the additive manufacturing workflow or any of the steps shown here today concerning printing of molds and design of conformal cooling channels, please don't hesitate to contact us at Siemens. I hope our discussion about software for design, simulation, and printing of molds with conformal cooling has been useful to you. And I'd like to thank HBD for the opportunity to talk about additive manufacturing software today. And I'd like to thank all of you for spending your time with us. Thank you. Thanks for your wonderful presentation, Mr. Ashley Eckhoff.
Now let's welcome Mr. Wilson from HBD to introduce the HBD Metal 3D printing solutions for dye and mold application. Mr. Wilson has been working with HBD since 2017 and he is experienced in selective laser melting additive manufacturing technology and its industry application. His expertise and the passion drive him dig deep into this technology application. He always helps customers understand the current situation and the prospect of metal 3D printing in dye and mold industry, so as to create the true value with HBD metal 3D printers for all customers. Hi, Vincent.
Okay, thanks, Bison. That was a great presentation. Uh, now, let's welcome Mr. Joe from Plus E to show and elaborate the innovative application of 3D printed tooling and closed loop mold temperature monitoring. After graduation with his major in tooling design, Mr. Joe once worked for many different transnational corporations in mold and dye industry. The tooling he designed for Schaeffler Group, BMW, Philips, Bosch, PSA, Webasto, Sonian, etc., all brought great benefits to the partners with huge cost savings. Hello, Mr. Joe. Hello, everyone. My name is Zhou Zhu, come from Plus E Intelligence Company, Shanghai. Today, I would like to share with you an innovative application of 3D printed tuning and closed lock mode temperature monitoring, a kind of green technology. We have three tools in this system. First, we're using conformal cooling. 3D printing, which by using HBD metal 3D printing machine. And second, we use a mode thermal temperature monitoring system. And the third, we using the 3D printing mode temperature controller. So why use 3D conformal cooling? This is because for the original injection molding industry, we have low efficiency high energy consumption, large fluctuation in the production process, high product scrapping rate. By using 3D printing, the mode cooling time is shortened and the cost can be more low. More functions from improvements in mode design and free design and easily manufacturing. So the 3D printing mode have those advantages changes. The injection molding cycle is greatly shortened and the molding efficiency is improved. The mold cooling time is reduced and the output is increased. The mold surface temperature is uniform, the product deformation is small, and the size control is excellent. The yield of injection molded parts is improved. The 3D printing mold has short printing cycle, less margin, and fast processing speed. The printing material has good mechanical properties, high corrosion resistance, non service life, and product quality, fast forming speed, and low overall cost. Even the 3D printed cooling channel, so efficient, but they have some disadvantage point, like narrow channel, easily blocking, complex design and frequent heat exchange. So for this issue, what we can do when we making the injection molding? We find these two tools to control when we're using the 3D printing more stable. So the monitoring is real-time and efficient temperature monitoring with closed loop control. And we have the temperature controller specially used for 3D printing, can provide green environmental friendly cooling during the injection. This is one of the pictures we make the medical SARS COV2 test bar. The material is PP and the cavity is 16 cavities. The molding time is five to 12 seconds per each shot. So in the middle side, you can see we monitor each cavity exactly the temperature. So when one cavity, the temperature wave more than two degrees C, we will ask the robot to take out the potential, potential issue parts to keep the ejection press process more stable. This is another mode we take the thermal imaging pictures when during the injection. So we can monitor some of the area if the temperature is higher or lower. And the left side is a kind of handle part injection. And the right side is a kind of fan part when making the injection. So this thermal imaging can monitor the injection process more stable 
and this is online monitor. So now I would like to introduce some of our case study for improving the cooling and the injection process. This is one of the garden tool shell, and this is old mold. The cycle time was 52 seconds, and the material is PP with two cavities. We study the original design and find they have some of the ribs, like these pictures, are difficult to code. So we make the two inserts, like the left side, the green is the 3D printed channel. So we make these inserts for cooling improved. After we put the 3D printed inserts in this mode, the optimized cycle time reduced to 36 seconds for each shot. And this is the injection process exactly reduced. And the right side is the 3D printing tuning controller. This is the first generation. Now we have more smaller mode controller, exactly used for very, very small channel and make it more efficiency every time. So this is the case for automotive electronic control components called ECU housing. For this one, for this project, we using 3D printing for cavity and core, and we use the special 3D printing temperature controller for cavity and the core side. Each side we put one machine to keep the cooling efficiency. So using this technology, we're re reducing cycle time from 42 seconds to 22 seconds. This is the part pictures and the cavity side. So the all cavity side we make 3D printed by HPT machine. And this is the pictures for the cavity. And right side is the pictures of cooling channel for core side. This is a very successful example we did two years ago. So this is a sprue we're using 3D printing. Also cold sprue and hot sprue can be used to solve the problem like low mark, stress mark, and also can reduce cycle time from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. The get issue, like blue mark, can be improved. This is uh, one of the impeller parts. The original problem is the deformation after injection molding. And dynamic balance performance is poor. It means when this part turning can be big noise. And also this original problem is non-cycle cycle time. So after we using the 3D printing, we reduce cooling time from 35 seconds to 28 seconds. And also the part has excellent dynamic balance performance. So when it's turning, it's quiet. This is one of the application we doing some of the venting like this green area we make the venting directly on the metal so this left side is a uh, original venting we make small inserts and put, put it together but sometimes it also can see some of the vent mark after we using the new technology to print the metal with venting so this area the flow mark has been solved. We can also make some of the bridge case to reduce the tooling printing cost. Like this picture, only the, ori the orange color needs to be printed. This area, the base part is normal steel. And for this Bridge printing, we also make our know-how to use better material. We call it RX300 and RX730. The original way to bridge 
is using the normal steel, like H13-2343, and printing MS1, someone called 1.2709. This is a different metal hybrid printing. So this normal way to make bridge, sometimes we can easily see the crack and leakage, like this hot runner was being leakaged when you use different material bridge. So plus E make the study and uh, we provide a new method to print. The solution is we use the same material. The best part is RX300 and the printed part material also RX300. So you can see the middle side, side the best part. This is the original picture when finished printing and this material are go together and the right side you can see the after greening, you cannot see any bridge mark. And this can solve the problem for the original different material printing. This we can provide. Our company plus E provide more design optimized, like 3D printing design, mode flow analysis, and some of the stress analysis. And also we did 3D printing, like model 3D printing, mode repair, product product application development. And we have post-process service, like heat treatment application and factory inspection, and also some of the anti-rust service. So thanks for all your time. And uh, if you have any more questions, please keep freely call me Thanks for your sharing, Mr. Zhou. Now let's welcome Mr. Liu from VIP to introduce his research on the application of high property dye steel. With unique VMP preparation technology, the powder is suitable for different mode applications in the field of metal 3D printing. From 2013 to 2021, Mr. Liu has engaged in the research and the development of additive manufacturing technology for eight years. His recent research is in selective laser melting and uh, metal materials, including dye steel, super alloy, aluminum alloy, etc. Now let's welcome Mr. Liu. It's my great honor to share the company's R&D process and achievements as one of the speakers today. First, I will make a briefly introduce about myself. My name is Shuang Liu, working in Jiangsu Very Advanced Materials Technology Company responsible for product research and development department. Doctor graduated from Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, engaged in 3D printing industry for eight years. The PPT topic I shared is research and application of high property dye steel. It mainly includes the following five parts. Next, I will briefly introduce the definition and history of 3D printing. Addictive manufacturing, AM. Is the materials oriented manufacturing technology and printing resolution versus the printing scalability speed chain of exist among various types of materials, including polymers, metals, ceramics, glasses, and composite materials. The development of AM is the invention of SLA in 1986, the FDM in 1989, the SLS in 1989 and the SLM in 1995. At present, the, the company products are mainly used in selective laser melting SLM. SLM is one of the main technologies in AM of metal materials. The laser is selected as the energy source. The path is planned according to the 3D CAD slice model, and the metal powder is melted and solidified to form the metal path. The following is the development of the 3D printing industry. In 2020, the global expenditure on 3D printing materials was about $2 billion US dollars, including industrial grade and desktop grade materials, an increase of 10% over 2019. In 2020, 21,000 sets of industrial 3D printing equipment were sold worldwide, including 2,200 metal 3D printers. As can be seen from the data, the 3D printing industry has great potential for development. Next is the second part of this PPT. 
R&D of high property dye steel. First of all, the research and the development of the material system of all directions, mainly including ratio, property, model, action. Each direction is equipped with professional R&D personnel. Next, I will introduce the R&D process. One, raw material. The company chose large vendors. Two, powder process. There are mainly three core process technologies. VLGA, EIGA, GREP. 3. Screening. Our company shows the airflow machine. Oscillating screen. 4. Testing. ICM. Screening energy. Oxygen and nitrogen content. Sericity. Parent density. Flow mobility. Dial. Verification. The methods on SEM and strength. 6. Application. Below are two important physical properties of powder. Our company through simulation and testing to study the fluorability of powder, through gravimeter and the CT detection to study the particle size distribution of powder. This is the company's main laboratory testing equipment, including powder testing and 3D printing performance testing. It can be seen that the company's testing equipment is advanced and complete. This part is the key preparation technology of that steel. As shown in the figure, the preparation of the powder is to melt the metal bar into liquid by the crucible in the melting chamber. And the liquid is prepared into powder particles by the action of the atomizer. This picture shows the special atomizer for that steel developed by the company independently. The following is a radio and a picture of the preparation of that steel. And you can see the atomization preparation process clearly. The picture on the right is an integrated equipment developed by the company independently. This part is the results of R&D. Through composition design, technical breakthrough was achieved. Rockwell hardness of CX layers is 33.8 to 35 HRC. Percentage elongation is 15 to 16 percent. Rockwell hardness of solution aging state is 48 to 51 HRC. Percentage elongation is 9 to 10 percent. Rockwell hardness of VMS series is 47 to 55 HRC. Has excellent wear resistance and corrosion resistance. The following is the main application of the steel of the company, mainly including for the writer mode, filter element type of water filter mode, secret holder mode, surveillance camera mode. The 3D printing product was co-developed by VMP and HBD. The device is HBD350. The process is SLM. The product is initial of mode. The company is committed to technology research and development. Has already won more than 20 projects, more than 10 scientific research achievements, totally in and participated in the formulation of 27 standards. Part is the future plans of the company's technical research and development. Our company established the Weihang Research Institute in 2021, which is committed to the and the development of Kaihani Stasty Powder Material and the powder surface purification technology of the independent project. In addition to independent research and development, the company looks forward to cooperation with domestic and foreign materials science, laboratories to development new materials, and welcomes the materials science experts at home and abroad to join us and make joint contributions to the career of 3D printing materials. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. That was fascinating. Um, so now that all of our five guests have finished sharing, uh, it's time for some questions. Um, let's just take a quick look and see and see what we have. Um, OK, so some questions for Mr. O uh, about voxel dance. Um, the first question we have is, can we work with B reps on voxel dance additive? Mr. O, are you there? Uh, 
Oh, guys, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, hi, Tom. Yeah. Th and thanks for the question. So the question is, can we work with B refs? Um, unfortunately, like with the current voxel dense additive, we can only read the B rep data. So once you import the B uh, the B rep data uh, into the software, um, we still have to convert it into mesh data first to process. But uh, voxel dense as a company, we do have a plan in the roadmap to further develop the software to make it in the future to, to be able to edit the rep directly in the software. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, another couple of questions for you. So um, someone says that they're impressed by the different support types in the first demo. Um, what would the best support structure be for this specific insert mold in, in real life? Ah, uh, okay. Um, that's a tricky question, to be honest. So I would suggest like uh, the volume support for such model in the first demo, which is a tie insert model. So also in real life, uh, I would say as an engineer or very likely an end user, you may always want to test and calibrate the support beforehand, such as the support types, the support parameters, etc., based on the different shapes of printing parts you would encounter in daily job. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. And I think we have one more question for you as well. So yep. just about um, so uh, one of the attendees has noticed that in the toolbar of the software, um, you can choose between a structure and honeycomb. <laughs> Uh, different types of, of lattices. Um, what would be the use mm -hmm. case scenario for each one? Okay, uh, I would say again, it's really case by case. Like for example, as for the honeycomb structure, it works fantastic as a self-support structure for models like uh, the dental crown uh, in the resin 3D printing technology, right? While in the SLM printing scenarios, there are certainly a variety of structures you can apply. So uh, one principle or one thing you want to be careful is the size of the unit cell of any structure. So if the, uh, the unit cell size is too big, the structure could be too loose or too weak to be able to hold the model from internally. While if it's too small, it could be troublesome to clean up the powder uh, after, uh, during the post-processing procedure. So that's pretty much it. Fantastic, okay, thank, thank you very Mr. much. Thank you, Tom. Okay, I got a question for uh, Mr. Ashley Eckhoff, I think. Hello, Mr. Ashley Eckhoff. Uh, the question is, do you have any examples of Siemens customers who have printed modes? Yeah, um, you guys can hear me okay? I had to switch headsets. My battery died on the other one. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, in the in the presentation I gave, we did show an example of a company called Toolcraft, who's very interesting because it probably didn't come across in those slides. But Toolcraft is a really innovative um, company that does all kinds of supply for does all kinds of manufacturing for all different industries. Um, and in that particular project, they did something really interesting. Again, that I I didn't really touch on because of time. But they didn't print just a mold insert. They printed the entire mold. And they did that for multiple reasons. One was uh, cooling, uh, which is part of the reason they also did the conformal cooling channels. Uh, but they also, by printing the mold, they were able to reduce a lot of the mass of the mold. And that's another advantage of additive manufacturing uh, in the mold industry is that by reducing mass, you not only allow the mold to heat up and cool faster because there's not as much mass to heat up and cool, uh, but also just the movement of the mold in and out, you know, as it compresses and decompresses in the uh, in the molding cycle takes less time and less energy. Um, so they found a lot of benefits by doing that. And uh, we've kind of shopped that interesting example around to several other companies that do mold work. And they were, you know, thrilled to see that somebody had done something that innovative with uh, with a mold. And we have several other companies now who are also following along, starting to use software to, uh, to make some pretty interesting uh, design choices and uh, new uh, experimentations with molds and conformal cooling and printing them, which is, which is great to see. Okay, thank you. Uh, I got another question for you. So why did Siemens pursue an end-to-end -end software process for additive? 
So at, at Siemens, we uh, traditionally have a lot of companies that are enterprise level companies, and they are in industries like aerospace and medical device. And those companies, especially in those industries, require traceability of the additive process. So we needed to provide for them a software process that begins at design, but includes all the other steps like simulation, build setup, and even things beyond the actual print like CAM, as I, I showed in the presentation. Um, this is really important because it allows companies to trace the entire additive manufacturing process from the beginning to the end so that they can generate the reports they need to generate for various different uh, agencies or customers um, in these areas that require high quality and, and lots of rigorous standards. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, that you have to buy the entire process. Um, you know, we can, we it's a it's an a la carte sort of thing. So you can you can get the pieces you need. I saw another question come in that asked whether uh, whether they need to buy the entire process or not. And the fact is, no. Um, you can buy the design part. You can import export your STLs uh, from that. You can take it into other pieces of software. Or for example, if you don't do printing yourself and you want to send parts to a service bureau. No problem. You don't buy the 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 um, design or the print setup portion of our software. You just buy the design portions you need. Uh, no big deal at all. Um, but the nice thing is that once your company grows or as your situation grows, maybe you decide you do want to start printing some parts yourself, and you do have the pieces of software you can then purchase uh, that all work together in a seamless fashion uh, once you're ready to uh, to adopt them. So it, it's the best of both worlds, really. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are still collecting questions from the audience, and if I got a new question, I'll ask you for the answer later. And now, uh, hi Tom, could you please continue your questions there? Of course, yeah. So I have a few more questions specifically for Bison uh, from HPD. Um, the first question is: uh, For how long has HPD engaged in the Dyn Mold application? And where are the customers mainly located? Okay, thank you for the question. About this question, it reminds me back to the first day I joined HPD in September 2017. It's about five years ago that HPD had stepped into the MON application. Until now, we have involved in many customer projects and we have the customer base from China, uh, South East uh, <coughs> Asia. Middle East and Europe and other area. So with the customers recognition and more intelligent models launched, we are extending our among customer groups more widely. Um, we look forward to join together to provide this kind of hot technology for your business. And and if you have any question for the, um, the Hmong and um, the printing, so just let us know. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Um, so when you're introducing selective metal 3D printing to, to potential customers, what are the uh, biggest challenges you face with convincing them that it's the right, uh, the right production means for them? Um, uh, I would like to say that it takes courage to move the first steps for all the new things. Uh, with case presentation and sharing, we prefer to print the parts and have customer to try and test. Uh, by helping customer to find its value which they are participating in, let things become easier to understand. And we are also want to invite our potential leads to come and visit our facility and our customer sites to show them how it works and what they say. That helps a lot for both of us and our customers. So well, thank you. Great, and I just have one last question, just more specifically about what we've covered today. So uh, someone would like to know, uh, for the metal grafting printing process, do you think this will become mainstream in the dye and mold application? Mm, yes, it is a good question. Um, <clears throat> from the experience, from the projects that we cooperate with our customers, uh, grafting printing cases are not less, as I would like to say. And to considering all the graphic grafting printing, normally is to save time and cost. 
And also the purpose to repair the mount because some customer, they want to try um, to fix the mount uh, compared to make a new one. It's more economic option. Um, that's why we developed the automatically grafting and positioning model to make the printing uh, more easier. But integrated printing, I would like to say, is also very common in aerospace and the med medical applications or other um, uh, areas. And for some special cases, which the design is a complicated structure uh, or, or with a, a conformal cooling channels for the whole part. And sometimes it also limited by the, the printing forming size. So uh, that's why HPD system is an open source for customer to mean different customized design and application requirements. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Uh, hi, Mr. Joe, are you with me? I think I got a question for you. Hi. Hi, Mas. Hi, Joe. Yeah, the question is, uh, what, what metal powders are most used for printing mode? Uh, we are, um, sometimes uh, we are using the anti-rust metal, which called CX, and and uh, we have a kind of high hardness material uh, we call it, uh, seven, 18 near 300, which is also called 1.2709. Okay, so uh, what is the temperature range of the mode temperature controller, controller in your uh, PowerPoint? Uh, in fact, uh, this is a special order for only small cooling size of the conformal cooling channel temperature controller. So the temperature range can from 5 degrees C to 120 degrees C. Okay, thank you. I think I got another question for Mr. Ashley Eckhoff. Hello, Mr. Ashley, are you still with me? I'm here. Yeah, uh, the question is, what if I don't need an end-to-end -end software solution? Can I still use a Siemens software? Sure, yeah, you can uh, You can pick up the various different pieces of the software you need. Um, you can buy only the pieces you need. So let's say uh, maybe you don't do, I don't know, topology optimization or you don't need lattice structures. Uh, you don't have to buy those modules. You can uh, perform the rest of the steps in the process with our software and uh, only purchase the pieces you need. Okay, thank you. Hi, Tom, you can continue Hi. with your questions. Excellent. So I have a last few questions just for Mr. Liu. Um, the first one is just to find out about the, the software. So what kind of software is used for powder flowability simulation? Um, thank you for the question. The software is EDM discrete uh, admit uh, element uh, simulation. Okay, fantastic. And so what are the advantages of integrated equipment? Um, <clears throat> there's no intermediate uh, transfer process to realize the production of a high purity powder. The uh, equipment uh, integrates process powder, uh, grading, screening, and uh, packaging. Brilliant. And I just have one last question just regarding the, the atomizer. So it can it only be used for dye steel materials or can it use be other materials as well? Uh, yes, you're right. The atomizer is only used the powder process of <coughs> oh, dye steel. Okay. Sorry. Okay, brilliant. No problem at all. Great. Okay, so I think due to the time limit, um, we'll have to end the webinar here. Uh, thank you very much for everyone that, that sent in a question. I'm sorry if we, we didn't manage to answer all of them. Yeah, for other questions, please get in touch by following the HBD social media on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or leave message through our website. We also look forward to seeing you at next webinar on automotive. Uh, in next webinar, we will talk about how metal 3D printing is 
transforming the automotive industry, creating complex parts, and uh, providing customization solutions across all aspects of the transportation development. And uh, also, we will send you invitations later. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thanks for your time. And uh, thank you, Ashley, Mr. O, Mr. Zhou, and uh, Wilson, Mr. Liu. Thanks for your time to attend our webinar. And uh, I want to also thank, thank every staff behind this webinar. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Hope to see you next. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye